The Emmys were last night. You might notice I seem a little hungover today. That's from drinking at home and yelling at my TV because I wasn't invited. <laughs> Burn it all! Burn it! <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't be the Emmys without the annual tradition of conservative anchors making fun of celebrities. All right, the Emmys, living up to the hype, wasting no time getting political. More insanity coming from the liberal Hollywood elite. The Hollywood elites, I think Hollywood elites are just behind. They're not connected to the American people. We've talked about how Hollywood and Hollywood and the cultural elites have uh, TDS, uh, Trump derangement syndrome. Sure, <laughs> Hollywood is all liberal elites. Unlike Fox News with its studio in the conservative heartland of New York. <laughs> Did you know every day when Steve Ducci rides his horse to work, he stops by the coal mine next to the Chrysler building to log in a few hours of digging, all before getting into some vittles down at that fish shack called Nobu. Oh, it's so poor, that restaurant, they have to eat with wooden sticks. The truth is the very elite are a small percentage of the people working in Hollywood. M most people are just trying to find their next gig and pay the bills. But when an actor finds work doing a regular job, suddenly everyone's shocked. 26 years after the Cosby show went off the air, Jeffrey Owens is going viral. All because a woman shopping at Trader Joe's snapped photos of him working at a New Jersey grocery store. But in all fairness, that does make him a member of the New Jersey elite. <laughs> But what's the problem? He's an actor who found a way to make ends meet between gigs. He, he should be commended. Frankly, that headline should read, Cosby Show actor spotted not raping. <laughs> you have to remember there's more than one Hollywood. There's the people of Hollywood, and yes, many of them are liberal. But there's also Hollywood the industry, which isn't exactly a liberal paradise. Hollywood is a multi-billion dollar business, and that means it's mostly white men in suits trying to figure out how to turn money into more money. We're talking to uh, the people who make up the executive suites that are about 94% white and 100% male, if you, if you look at the major Hollywood studios. For years, people would say, well, yes, diversity is a great thing, but they thought of it as a luxury, something that we'll get around to at some point. But when you start connecting diversity to the bottom line, to the dollars, to shareholder value, suddenly it becomes more of an imperative. In Hollywood, diversity equals shareholder value. That's literally putting a price on people of color. When in history have we done that? <laughs> Not the most liberal idea, is it? But it's how Hollywood is run. In fact, just today, I heard two studio executives talking about it in the offices next door. You say, Roy, did you hear? Brown and yellow people are worth big bucks now. Yes, like Black Panther and all those crazy rich Asians. Yeah, I wanted Jennifer Lawrence to play all the Asians, but they wouldn't let me. Also fought like hell not to make them crazy. I wanted normal Asians. Used to be you'd just throw a white guy in there, give him a wig and a sword, call him Chung or whatever. Bada bing, bada boom. It's an Asian. Not anymore. Now those Asians gotta be crazy and they gotta be real. Oi! <laughs> that, uh, that last sound was the two of them 69ing. 